Okay, in this example, uh, we want to determine uh, which of the following uh, graphs here um, is a function. Um, so recall that a function is a relation, uh, but it's a relation that has a special property. It's a relation where each input matches one and uh, uh, only one uh, output. Um, so before we go any further, uh, we should... Um, uh, make sure that we understand why uh, these graphs are in fact relations before we even uh, get around to checking uh, which one is a function, uh, if any of them are functions. Uh, so we need to understand why a graph of a set of points is a relation. Um, but remember now, a relation has a very simple definition. A relation is just a set of ordered pairs. So you may be wondering, well, where are the ordered pairs uh, in these graphs? Uh, what I see here is uh, graphs, and what does that have to do with ordered pairs? Um, but remember, a graph is nothing more than a uh, collection of points. Uh, it might be, uh, as is the case here, um, a collection of infinitely many points. Uh, but nevertheless, a graph is nothing more than a collection of points. And uh, each uh, point in a graph has coordinates. And uh, each of those coordinates on a rectangular coordinate system um, is an ordered pair. So um, really, in fact, uh, you can think of a graph as being a set of ordered pairs. Uh, you don't always think of it that way, but you can think of a graph as being a set of ordered pairs. And therefore, a graph um, uh, of a set of points uh, is really the same thing as a relation. All right, now, uh, now that we've established that uh, these graphs are, in fact, relations, uh, let's check to see if these relations meet that uh, definition of function. So let's start with the graph uh, here on the left. Um, so uh, does this relation have the property that each input uh, will match uh, one and only one uh, output? Um, and the answer is no. Uh, for instance, uh, although there are ex other examples of this, um, if you use uh, five, for instance, as input, uh, notice that the input five then uh, according to the graph, is going to match um, an, a positive output up here, uh, somewhere close to uh, uh, 5. And then it's also going to uh, match um, a negative output uh, down here. And so that means the input 5, according to this relation, has two different matching outputs, one positive and one negative. And see, that's exactly what we cannot have in a function. We cannot have the same input uh, matching two different outputs. Uh, so the graph here uh, on the left, although it's a perfectly nice graph uh, and it's a perfectly good relation, it doesn't uh, meet the definition of a function. Uh, so uh, the graph on the left uh, is not a function. Now on the other hand, what about the graph here on the right? Okay. Well, uh, just think about what happens um, if you use um, any number x here as input um, uh, in this uh, uh, relation. Notice uh, you're going to end up with exactly one uh, matching output in every case. So you have to sort of visualize that, but that's pretty easy to visualize. Each input uh, x here we use uh, in this relation is going to match one and only one uh, matching output. We're not going to have the same issue uh, with this relation on the right uh, that we had uh, with this relation on the left. Okay, And so because um, each input matches uh, exactly one output, one and only one output, then um, uh, this graph on the right um, is a function. So we get um, one of these relations is not a function, and one of these relations um, is a function.